I don't like this. No cheese gluten free bullshit. <sighs> oh, what? Is this lipstick too much? Is this outfit too much? Could it be construed as extra? Yeah, if I want to play dress up on camera, I'm going to. Oh my god, somebody comb my hair. Oh, oh sweet. Jesus. What did we learn this week? We learned this week to never, ever stop believing in your dreams. <laughs> There are like maybe 10 people that will know what I'm referring to. For the rest of you, I'm sorry. Some things just have to remain somewhat private. Kind of private. I mean, I'm telling everyone. I just can't tell YouTube. <laughs> Sometimes you add a new trophy to your mental mantle. It's not a trophy you would put out on a real mantle, but that doesn't mean it's not important to you. <laughs> Anywho, shall we move on? <laughs> this week's pretty fun. A good friend of mine turned 30 recently. I know, disgusting. <laughs> um, she requested that I make her a birthday sash. On the sash, she wanted the words dirty 30. And you know what? When it's something within the realm of kind of stupid, too much, pointless, <laughs> maybe even a little childish, then my answer is always going to be a yas. A yas. A yas. A yas. So her request, um, as I said, was that it's a dirty 30. Uh, I asked her the color and of course she chose hot pink. <laughs> Why not? So I decided that I was going to embroider the words Dirty 30 because I guess I could have painted them or uh, blah, blah, blah. or cut it fabric in the shapes of letters and done it that way, but I wanted something that after completing uh, made me want to kill myself. <laughs> Let's just say the process was long, it was very tedious. It's actually more just the, the time consuming portion of it. I underestimated completely, especially because I wanted to outline the embroidery with sequins. And you know, the way I did the sequins also takes an insane amount of time, but I cherish her. So therefore I, I guess it was worth it. And you only turn 30. You only have your dirty 30 once. One time I was going out was like, I, I, I didn't want to flaunt the fact that, you know, she was 30 and I was almost 30. Because everyone else is like 12, 13. So then you just feel like a grandmother and a pedophile because a lot of them are good looking. Young gentlemen of the world. Stop being so delicious. How to be a freaking creep 101. I could write the book on it. You want me to teach a class on it? Done. Finished. No problem. So this video, we are covering new ground. I'm going to be showing you how to embroider. Not well, of course. I'm going to be showing you how to apply sequins to a garment. There are different ways you could do it. Um, the way I do did it was like individual sequins. So. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> um, and also just in general, how to sew a sash. Um, there's going to be, uh, you know, screw ups. There's going to be plenty of screw ups, as always. Okay, let's get into it. I washed the material first because satin is a fraying SOB and the internet told me to do it if the project was something that I would be washing. I don't know how weird we're going to be getting on my friend's birthday, so I decided to give it a wash just in case. Next, I measured how long I would want it to be on my body and based the length around that. I came up with 28 to 29 inches and added on a couple of inches for good luck. So a grand total of 31 inches. For the width, I thought 4 inches looked nice. The material was very wrinkled, so I ironed it. 
ironing for two projects in a row, I'm a regular 50s housewife. Make sure your iron is set for the type of material you are using so you don't melt and or burn it. I had to use my brain very slightly and calculate the measurements for the sash based on what I had so far. Basically, times everything by two because the material is going to be folded over and needs to go the entire length around the front and back of the body. And an inch for seam allowance. I came up with 63 inches long by 9 inches wide. The edge of the material had a bit of a curve to it, which was annoying. I chose the straighter side and measured out the length. Because it's such a long length, I broke it down into smaller bits by marking where I left off and adding the lengths together. It turned out that my material was actually too short for the length that I wanted, but only by 3.5 inches, which I am not going to crap my pants over. Then I went along and marked out 9 inches down from the top and connected my dots for a pretty little line to cut down. There isn't any stretch to this fabric so you don't have to worry about the proper placement of that for once. I attempted to try and straighten out the edge of the fabric with pinking shears, however things didn't go as planned. The fabric did not want to cut cleanly and it wasn't worth committing the effort. I cut down my pretty line with a rotary cutter. However, if you have pinking shears you should definitely use those. This fabric will fray like a psychopath. Next, fold the fabric in half width ways, wrong sides together, and pin. Then pin the ends together so you have an idea of what the finished project will look like. I also did a little test before drawing all over the sash to double check that the marker I was using would come off. It's supposed to be water and air soluble, and as I found out while embroidering, this B word really is air soluble. Annoyingly so. I wanted the sash to go left to right on my body, but that's not what's gonna happen. I sat for quite a while being incredibly confused about what way to write Dirty 30 on the sash so that it would be legible. I also kept forgetting what way it was supposed to be on my body. Just the usual little dollops of confusion sprinkled all over my life. I thought that maybe it was a mirror sort of effect and that if I wrote it backwards it would somehow look correct when wearing the sash. But after asking my roommate if it looked right, he informed me that I was a stupid moron and that he hated me. But really, he said that it looked backwards, and we came to the conclusion that the sash had to go over the other shoulder. Next was figuring out where I wanted the writing to be width-wise on the sash. I marked halfway and three quarters down the width of the sash, and an inch up from the bottom so that I wouldn't be placing my letters too high or too low, and added a test D to make sure it looked how I wanted it. I thought three inches from the top was a good guideline for where my letters should be. I later changed it to 3.5 though. As you know, my plan was to outline each letter with sequins, so I placed some to make sure it wouldn't look too cramped and would be a good distance from the top and the bottom of the fabric. And this is when I changed it to 3.5. Then I continued marking out the letters. You can use stencils for the letters to make them look not like a piece of crap, but where's the fun in that? I then realized that I was positioning the letters too close together and that the sequins would be overlapping each other. So I spaced the letters out a little more while also creating a weird and confusing 3D-like effect. Now is the time to get into my really poor explanation of how to embroider. Yay. First, you want to get yourself an embroidery hoop and plop your fabric between it. You can get them from Walmart for pretty dang cheap or probably steal one from your grandmother. Get yourself an embroidery needle, it's like a regular needle but bigger, and thread that bish with some embroidery thread. It's like regular thread but thicker. Your stupid B word of a grandmother probably has that stuff too. <laughs> Who says that? After threading, tie a knot on the end. I tend to go nuts with knotting and do way more than necessary. It's easier than having to redo something because your bitch ass knot has ruined your life by sliding through the fabric. The stitch I will be doing is called a satin stitch. It's overall pretty straightforward, but I am also going to struggle immensely trying to explain it. Start the stitch on either side of your outline and pull the thread through. Then go straight across to the other side of your outline and plunge that needle back through the fabric. You want to get the next stitch as close as you can to the previous one without actually poking through the same hole, which I have done. Then poke it through and repeat. If you want your stitch to be tight, it's better to use a smaller stitch. It would take less time to do a long stitch from the top of the D to the bottom, but for a cleaner end product, it's better to go widthwise across the letter. A little tip is that when you make the thread excessively long like I did, it does mean you don't have to tie off as much. However, it also makes it much easier for your thread to get knotted and tangled as you're pulling it through. 
In the end, it's really your schwas on which path of annoyance you want to travel. Good luck doing this repetitive task. Over and over again. Seriously, good luck. This is a good time to bring up the fact that I should have definitely been using a lining fabric behind the satin. This is a just for fun project, but the end stitch would have turned out nicer if the fabric would have been stiffer, which could be accomplished with a lining material. According to the internet, good lining fabrics are linen and cotton. Them natural fiber fabrics. Curved and angled lines are difficult because your stitch can end up being slanted and messy looking. Do your best to keep it as straight as you can. You can always add in extra stitches here and there to clean it up too, which I will show you in a little bit. For lettering, it's best to stitch in one direction and then when the direction of the letter changes, have your stitch go in that direction. <laughs> Does that make sense? If you look at my D, by the way, I am so happy that the first letter is a D so I can keep saying things like, look at my D. <laughs> But anyway, if you look at my big fat D, then you can see that I stitch straight up and then for the curve of the D, now that one was too much, I changed the direction of my stitch to match it. At the bottom corner, I did attempt to angle my stitch, but it ended up being annoying and difficult to keep looking clean. If you're noticing that you have a lot of tiny gaps in your stitches, you can go back and add in small stitches for a fuller look as I'm doing here. You can also add these in as you go along which would probably be easier and less of a waste of thread. Next up, we have our sequin outline. This task is also incredibly tedious, but slightly less time consuming and more forgiving. Start by shoving your needle through the fabric where you want your first sequin to lie. I found it easiest to place the sequin through the needle when it was still a little in the fabric so that it stays in place a little better as you pull the rest of the thread through. Then poke your needle through right beside the sequin and pull it tight. If you have the stitch too close to the sequin or even under it, which I was doing at first, the sequin is more likely to pop up in a weird way. But if you make it too far away, then it will be loose and will move around more. Find a happy medium that you like the look of. The side you place your stitch on just depends on what direction you want your sequins to lay. Then again, repeat over and over and over again and then over again once more. I also found out after that I couldn't really use the embroidery hoop when the sequins were in place because it would crunch them. So I had to awkwardly do the next letter using my fingers to try and hold the fabric tight. I definitely should have ended the lettering here and wore the sash around every day. I had a few little oopsies with my sequins. The D went too high and the I and R were too close together, but if it wasn't a little janky, you know what, it wouldn't be me. Another tip, when you're connecting the different stitch directions of a letter, just get as close as you can to the previous stitch to help it blend in nicely. I don't even know what this knot is. I think I sewed through the thread itself and then knotted it and I don't even know. My rage was too much, so I ended up cutting it, pulling out a bit of the existing stitch, tying a knot, and then starting again. Some fast tips coming at you. I lost a few needles during this project, so I started pinning them in my clothing when I wasn't using them, but would also need them soon enough. Embroidery thread is made up of several smaller threads, so you can pick the thickness of your stitch. I went with the full six, but you can break it down to one or two or whatever your heart desires. You can even double up the thread and have a full force thick ass stitch. Now that the lettering is done, it's time to actually sew up the sash. As you can see, having the end pieces go straight across was leaving it weird and baggy, so I needed to sew it down on an angle. As always, pin it on while it is on your body so you don't have to mess around and guess afterwards. The lettering took me so, so, so long that I ended up sewing this together about an hour before going out. I'm just gonna apologize now for the next sequence because all it is is confusion. If you don't know what's happening, that's perfect because neither do I. I for some reason thought that I should be folding the garment widthwise and sewing down the sides instead of going lengthwise. Sometimes I need to know what not to do in order to get closer to knowing what is correct. So there was a request that I reenact, um, I guess my rage, my annoyance. See, this is why you see me clip together stuff because when I'm actually thinking about what to say, it takes me like a freaking hour. Uh, but yes, there was a request for a, a smidge of a reenactment. You know what? Here it is. This. 
fucking thing is driving me nuts. I sewed it wrong again! <laughs> Mother <laughs> shit ball! Too bad we didn't get this freaking out on camera. Yeah, you should do a reenactment. Ooh, ooh, that's a good idea. <laughs> D did you like that? I thought it was a good idea for some tomfoolery, some stupidity, a little silliness. So I didn't freak out that much, okay? I mean, I probably freaked out in my room that much, and then they heard it, and then I came out and explained why I was mad. But I just thought that would be a little fun. So, don't do what I did before. Follow what my fingies are telling you to do now. I also used a simple straight stitch with moderate tension. Cut away the excess material. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> to make my angle somewhat even on both sides, I cut the fabric away using the finished end as a guideline. I folded the fabric in and maneuvered it until it lied flat and then sewed straight across. You're gonna marry this old man. For a cleaner finished product, I should have turned it inside out, sewed across leaving a small gap, and after turning it right side out, finished with a ladder stitch. But time was of the essence. <laughs> oh. Yeah, dirty, dirty. She's dirty and she's dirty. Okay, she's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Is this gonna make it to the video? We'll see. <laughs> no one will ever know. <laughs> that will. That will. Now I didn't think it was a great idea to bring my camera downtown. Um, and I also was maybe a wee bit of the intoxicated. So I didn't think to record a video with my phone. So here is another reenactment of the night itself. So how did everyone like the end product? Was it worth spending literal days, hours upon hours, <laughs> losing my mind making it? I'm gonna say yes. However, everyone did seem to think that it was, um, it was a bachelorette sash, but I mean, that's a big whatever. What, Max? Max. <laughs> the only thing is that I started the lettering down a bit too low. Um, I found that when she was actually wearing the sash, uh, you know, the lettering should have kind of been here, but it kept hanging down and like you could kind of only see dirty, which isn't a bad thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that's dumb. Oh, that's really stupid. Perfect. Uh, also, I didn't mention this in the video, but I did end up just pinning it in place. Um, I didn't want to sew the ends together because, you know, different people might be wearing it in the future because unfortunately time doesn't stop and we'll all be reaching 30 soon enough. But yeah, so I just pinned it in place rather than stitching it so I could make it a little more form fitting depending on the person wearing it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Do it. <laughs> uh you know you can leave me a little, little comment um say like julie everyone hates you julie grow up get your life together if you want me to keep making this ridiculous crap then subscribe please thank you thank you thank you to the literal 14 of you that have subscribed for the rest of you that might be watching my videos <clears throat> and not subscribing grow up what does it cost you? What, you have to click a little button? Oh my god. Follow me on the Instagram, on the Facebook, 
I don't even post anything, but follow me regardless so that you know when I put up a new video, obviously. Listen guys, I'm gonna try and post more. It's just like, first of all, my life literally isn't that interesting. I mostly sit around either sewing or editing. But you know what, I'll, I'll make an effort. I'll see what I can do. Join me next week where I make something else. If you wanna know what I'm gonna be making, you just gotta wait and see. The thing is, I don't know what I'll be making yet. How should we end it this week?